All right, hey, John Cruz, professional, long-time professional bass singler, and a lot of people ask about how do you break down a lake? Well, with technology, you can do it a lot faster and a lot easier on your computer. I'm over here in our inventory manager's um, office, Alex. He's got the Navionics already all pulled up. He looks at it a lot. And we're gonna go ahead and look at John H. Kerr Reservoir, AKA Bugs Island. If you're from Virginia, it's Bugs Island. If you're from North Carolina, it's Kerr Reservoir because John H. Kerr was a senator, I believe it was, state senator from North Carolina that helped get this thing built. That's cool and all, but you wanna catch fish on this body of water. It's a big body of water, it's 50,000 acres. That's a big lake. So as you're, as you're looking at it, you're thinking, golly, you know, I'm gonna have one day to run down there and poke around, uh, or I'm gonna have you know a weekend down there. I, you can't fish all of this in, in that kind of time period. So, the first thing you do on a big body of water is that you cut it into a, a portion. Um, and I remember back in the day, going to a, um, a seminar with George Cochran, and he had a really simple philosophy on where to fish bigger bodies of water like this, based on the time of year. He said in the spring, in the springtime, he fishes the lower half of the reservoir, which would be closer to the dam here. Uh, so this lower half would be where you'd fish. He said, and, then, and in the fall, he fishes the upper half. So he would fish, you know, this, the backs. That, that in my 20-some in my year career, that has been a very accurate way to kind of dissect a body of water. Now, there, of course, there's always, there's always exceptions. Um, you can always do well, um, it, you know, in the lower ends of lakes in the fall and then in the upper ends of lakes, potentially in the spring, but uh, that's just one way to kind of start to break it down. But um, so as you're, as you're kind of looking at that philosophy and when you're gonna go, let's start in the springtime. We're gonna go through the seasons real quick. I'll do an overview on where to go in this body of water and then we'll get into more specific type places to look for. So in the spring, we're starting spring. Um, in the spring, you've got spawn, uh, pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn. Post uh, so we're gonna start on that lower half of the lake. Uh, we're gonna go into, in, 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 in this big body of water, we need to pick one creek to stay in. Um, either the back half of Nutbush, the, the mouth of Nutbush, this is, uh, um, Eastland Creek, Rudd's Creek. Let's go to Eastland Creek. It's a big, b good, big springtime creek right here. I used, to, I used to fish Bugs Island a lot, so I'm pretty familiar with it, but I haven't fished it in, in quite a while. Fished it very little in quite a while. So here, here's, here we're gonna stay in this creek. I would highly advise you staying in one creek like this on the lower end of the lake in the springtime. So in the, in the springtime, we're gonna start in the pre-spawn and in that pre-spawn period, we are gonna be looking for places with rockier areas that are leading to where those fish are gonna be spawning. So let's, let's identify a few areas where these fish are gonna be spawning. Um, we're gonna look, look just right here. This pocket here, that's gonna be a spawning pocket. This pocket here, that's gonna be a spawning pocket. This pocket here, gonna be a spawning pocket. Gonna be a spawning pocket. Uh, maybe, maybe a spawning pocket, definitely a spawning pocket right through here. Uh, definitely a spawning pocket. Those areas we're gonna be able to identify as spawning pockets. Now let's take one step out from those spawning pockets. You look right here and you got a road bed going across this point. In the pre-spawn, I can promise you, this is gonna be an area that I will, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll in a little closer on it. I will definitely have circled uh, you know, you got a road bed over here on this point, a road bed crossing this point. There's going to be some garbage out here to throw around that those fish are probably going to be staging on before they go back in here and spawn. Same, same deal here. And you've got a little jet out point right here. That could be an area where they're going to be staging in the pre-spawn time period. Pre-spawn. Um, you look down here on the bottom of this map. Look at this point, look, look, you got all this soft structure, like, you know, this looks like mud to me, it looks like mud to me. The, the lines are very even, and all of a sudden you've got, look at those lines that shoot out. Th there's gonna be some kind of hard surface here 
Uh, I don't know if this is going to be rock or is it going to be gravel. There's going to be something hard here. This is going to definitely be a pre-spawn staging place. Maybe the same thing here, but you can see this is shallower. This is going to be a little deeper. Um, this, this, they're going to use these same type places on the pre-spawn and the post-spawn. Um, so that is, those are kind of the places that you're going to be looking for. You could potentially see going even a little further out into the creek. This is a, it looks like a good, you know, this is a high spot, less than five feet of water. That could be great on the pre-spawn. This could be a place where they would come and feed in the post-spawn when the shad start spawning, uh, that kind of stuff. But that's the kind of stuff you're going to look for uh, there. But the other, it, it's hard to tell exactly what, what, the, what is on these banks. Uh, and that's, that's another key to kind of reading this. But as you can see, these topo lines, how they're uh, further apart here, that's going to be a slower tapering bank, probably more of a soft, soft bank. Uh, now you got over here, you see how tight these are? That's probably a bluff bank. That may be an area, maybe they're not staging here on the point or here on this point. Maybe they pre-spawn stage on this steeper bank. I'll bet you it's probably rock right there as steep as that is. Uh, it's gonna have deep water close by. Those fish can move right up. I would be throwing a jerk bait, maybe a jig on that. Uh, maybe throwing a, a, something like that in the pre-spawn. Uh, and then, you know, spawn here, here, you know, possibly here in the back. Uh, those all, they're going to be in the pockets. They're going to be on the bank. Uh, they're going to be in the protected areas back in here around these docks, possibly uh, back in here. As I mentioned, these other pockets, that's going to be the spawn. Spawn's not rocket science to, to kind of figure out where they're going to be. Post spawn, they go back out to those kind of similar places. But in that post spawn, they tend to get on the flatter points. Pre-spawn, they want, I think they like the rock. They like that little secondary stuff like this one we, we showed down here below. For the pre-spawn, that's the kind of stuff that they like to get on. Pre-spawn. In the post-spawn, they could be on this, but my guess is that they're going to be more on this type of, this type of deal that jets out. You know, this is probably six feet judging by the topo on the map under normal water conditions uh, they could be out here a little slower tapering probably going to be some stumps maybe some uh, brush piles and stuff like that on these type places that same you know right here typical post spawn deal uh, they, they will probably be out there even during the summertime as well uh, so that's kind of the stuff you look for and as we move into summer uh, I feel like the fish start to move towards the deeper, little deeper water. We're going to go further away from the spawning areas out here. These points and humps that run way out into the lake, maybe this long skinny point out here. I'd look for structure out on the end of it. Let me zoom in on that bad boy right there. I think I fished that years ago, but my memory, I'd have to go out there and look. But you can see how this runs way out there and then it just kind of falls off. I'll bet you there's some structure out there. If there's not stumps or rocks out there, I'm sure somebody's dropped a brush pile. That looks like a really, and if, you're, if, this, is your, if this is your honey hole, my bad dog, my bad. Uh, sorry about that. But that's, that looks to me very juicy for a summertime type situation. Again, you know, we're getting closer to the main channel. We got that there. In that summertime, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably be further out in the the main portion of the lake you can see this is you know really deep water 60 feet for for this lake's really this is really deep i'm going to be looking more for what's out here what's out here what's out here what's out here stuff close to that really deep water along those points and humps um you know this is kind of a shallower point but you know possibly that that there that's the type of stuff this doesn't excite me very much. Uh, I, might, I might look at it, but there's really no discernible point that kicks off just on the map. If, you, if, if there actually is a high ridge that comes out here, it's very discernible, uh, but may not show up very well on the topo map, that could be really key. Because it doesn't look great, but maybe it is. Maybe the same thing's going on here. It doesn't look like much, but maybe it's like a little rock vein real hard, hard on the top. The fish will use that for sure. That's the kind of stuff you look for in the 
in the summertime. So it, and then you move into the fall. In the fall time period, a lot of, there's two things that happen. Um, it depends on your lake, but some lakes, uh, a lot of it have exclusively shad or alewives. Those fish typically move towards the backs of the creeks, the backs of the pockets, as we talked about. In the fall time period, we're going to probably change locations. Just me. Uh, I'm going to go to a place uh, like, you know, Rudd's Creek or Grassy Creek or the back of Nutbush. Any of those type places are going to be more of where. Let's go to the back of Nutbush. I hadn't fished back here in a, in a blue moon. But in the back, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, so in, we're in the fall, you know, September, October. We're gonna, we're gonna just fish this back portion. That's it. That's it. Um, we're gonna zoom in a little bit here. Uh, I just know, I know the lake and what it looks like. The back of Nutbush is flatter, a little bit flatter, but that's fine in the fall. You're gonna be looking in the fall. You're gonna be looking for isolated structure on those, on these flats in the back. So you, there still could be some fish deeper. There's always some fish deeper uh, that you could, you could catch on this stuff. But if I'm going to another lake that I've never been to before, I, this is the kind of stuff I'm going to be looking for. And I, honestly, what I would do, some people on the fall, they stop and work their way back. In the fall, I'll go as far back as I can go. Like in this, this creek here, in Mill Creek, I would go all the way to this bridge, if I could get to this bridge, and then I would go all the way back here, and I would start, and then I would work my way out. See, you know, if they're not here in the back, they might be around this bridge. If they're not around this bridge, they might be around these docks staging, waiting for that bait to come past them. Uh, they may be any, around any of these docks, any of these docks. Uh, there's no discernible point or anything right here just to hold them other than that and those docks. I'll, I'll bet you in the fall that probably pretty good right there. Um, but none of this excites me. This steeper stuff usually does not excite me as much. This flatter bank is more promising in the, in the fall. Uh, and then the other factor is when you're looking at this is uh, shade lines. In the, so in the, in the afternoon, this bank's going to start to get shaded. Uh, all this is going to be sunny in the middle of the day, all of this. But then in the afternoon, this is going to get shaded and this right here is going to get shaded. So you might be able to run that bank right there with a pop bar or a whopper plopper or a buzz bait uh, or a shallow running crankbait and, and catch you a couple in that shade line. Uh, and that's something you can, you can see here that you, know, you can translate to later uh, when you get on the water. But that's, that's kind of the fall breakdown. So then we go into winter. Now in the fall, I mean, you can, you can always catch them off. I mean, that's the old railroad trestle there. Um, you know, stuff like that holds fish almost year round. Uh, but in the, in the wintertime, a lot of the fish, you know, spring, wintertime and spring was going to move back. I'm going to move back down towards the dam, that section of most lakes that I'm going to be fishing. And then let's just, uh, let's see here. Go over here in, in uh, Palmer's, Kimball Point area. And in the wintertime, I'm going to be trying to find isolated rock that's, that's deeper. That is, that is really key in the wintertime, especially if it's, if it's next to something. And there's no bluff banks in this area. I, I mean, I've been there. But as you can see, there's no topo lines that, that mash right up against the against the bank. I mean, that's pretty deep right there. That might, that might be a place I would probably look. I mean, you see how these lines go way up in here. There's a chance there could be some rock in there, but probably not. I mean, you see how flat that point is. Uh, maybe, maybe in here, uh, that looks like it could be a good wintertime area right in there. I'm going to go um, a little bit around here, here's Palmer's. That was Keats Branch I was in. I'm gonna go around here, you know, we got the dam right up here. This is, this is, this has got a lot of potential for, this screams wintertime fishing to me. Right here. I mean, look at this right here. You got all this open water, deep open water. Uh, you got 
I promise you that's that's a bluffy. I'm almost positive that's a bluffy type, bigger bouldery rock. That is like a magnet in the winter time. I'm gonna take a jig, maybe even an A-rig. Um, you can take it, that kind of stuff. You can see it's the where which way this face. In the morning, you're gonna have the sun coming up over here on the east side. This is gonna be getting a lot of sun in the morning. Could be good early. Also could be good in the afternoon when it's getting a little more shady. You might think winter time, I want, those fish want to be in the warmth, but they also like that hidden shade of, of feeling like they're uh, in cover and that they, they'll go feed a little bit more. So, so as that sun comes up, it's going to bake on this all day. It's going to warm this up, warm, 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 warm. Then in the afternoon, all of a sudden, now you've got some shade pockets being created by those rocks and by the sun being on this side. Dude, that's to me that's screaming winter time. Uh, I may, I'm, you know, if I've never fished it in the winter, I may fish it two or three times, early, middle of day, later in the day, just to see when they move up on it. That's just uh, one of those typical winter time good looking places uh, for me, and and what I like to do. And now I know that out here in this area. You can see a lot of undulations, a lot of long points. I'm sure a lot of this is red clay. There's rock scattered in through here as well. If I can find isolated rock on any of these kind of points like this, close to the deeper water, any of this kind of stuff, if I can find some rock, that is probably gonna be good in the winter time as well. So, all right, that kind of takes you through how to break down a bigger body of water by looking at the Navionics map. If anybody has any questions or any type of input that they want to help with other people that are trying to break down lakes like this, by all means, drop it down in there. We all want to learn together. And um, it's, just, it's just so much fun to try, you know, figure something else, something else like this on the screen and then go actually go and apply it on the water. It's a lot of fun. So uh, got the input. Let us all learn.